Hey gang, I uh, thought that we'd do kind of a light-hearted episode today on the things that the community is pissed off about this week, and this time it happens to be modularity, so I thought that I would do kind of a light-hearted, um, okay, not light-hearted, kind of a shallow dive into modularity, just kind of where it is, where it came from, what ships are going to do it, why CIG kind of keeps going to that well, and... Um, Kind of game development in general and issues with CIG's communication and so I have as usual tightly scripted and laid this one out so it will take exactly 28 minutes exactly all right let's go ahead and get this thing airborne we'll start talking let's get this Okay, so if you've never seen one before, this is the Aegis Retaliator, and it's kind of a cross between an attack submarine and a strato fortress. It's a bomber, but of course we're in spaceships, so bombers shoot a bunch of big torpedoes. Um, so you can kind of see, I believe there are six turrets on this thing. Uh, it's an interesting ship in the fact, I still think it's one of the prettier ships in the game. Uh, interesting thing about it is that there are no pilot controlled guns. The only thing the pirate has, or the pilot has control of, is the torpedoes, which this thing carries a lot of. Um, but it has six turrets, and all of those turrets are manned. So you can sort of see two up there on the back, and you can see one there. There's one underneath. I believe there are two more underneath. Let's flip this bad boy over so we can see. Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. Oh, there's just uh, one right there in the middle, or kind of uh, towards the bow. So, five turrets. Um, so you get this thing fully manned, and it's actually kind of a nasty ship for its size, roughly Connie-sized. Uh, but one of the things that makes the Retaliator serve a much coveted ship since about I think 2014 was that it was supposed to be the first ship with modularity and they have been talking about modularity almost as long as they've been talking about salvage coming into the game maybe a little bit longer so uh, let's go ahead and take a quick tour of the ship and I'll kind of show you where the modules are and what they're supposed to do uh, so let's start by going over here uh, not that way this way so you can sort of see these torpedoes here, and I'm going to get to a clip bit in a bit where John Crew is talking about this, but this is one of the modules. And this whole thing can be switched out for a cargo module, a dropship module. They've talked about other modules um, that the ship might have, but that's, that's going to be one. And the second one is right back here which same thing it can be traded out for like a cargo module a dropship module and all that and uh hopefully at this point i'll start playing in the background an image of what they envision there uh but anyway so the general idea of modules is that you basically keep the internals of the ship more or less the same there's just one, or in the case of the Retaliator, two rooms that can be flipped out for a different room. So you're basically taking a rectangle, dropping it out of the ship, and putting in a different rectangle. So on the surface, that sounds pretty easy, uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, but the reality is, is that it's obviously more difficult than it sounds, and there's a lot of moving parts to it and CIG does not have unlimited resources or employees. Um, so that was kind of what I was going to get into on this one. Uh, so there's your kind of short version of this version of the Retaliator. This is the bomber, um, and it's currently undergoing a rework. Uh, this is a Squadron 42 asset, so it has been prioritized. The problem is, is that the... Um, the internals, the modules, are, they're not a Squadron 42 asset. So in Squadron 42, they need the bomber. 
they don't need, as far as we know, the dropship or the cargo ship variants. And so they're not going to prioritize those assets until Squadron 42 is pretty far down the line. Um, so why does CIG want modularity? And so one of the reasons, um, kind of obvious in hindsight, it's much easier to have a ship built. And so you have this ship, it does one thing, and then if you flip out one room or two rooms in the case of the retaliator, you've got a completely different ship. Uh -oh. well. there, you go. there we go. Uh, so if you flip out one or two um, rooms on it, you've got a completely sh different ship with a different purpose. And the only thing you had to remodel was this one room. You didn't have to redo all these hallways. You didn't have to redo the cockpit. You didn't have to do anything else. So you can have like a junior modeler go and say, okay, this is your parameters. It has to fit here. It has to have a door here and a door here. Uh, this is your space. Make us 20 rooms that do 20 different things. So give me a salvage module. Give me a medical module. Give me a dropship module. Give me a cargo module and just have this one person bust out modules. So they're not having to worry about the whole external of the ship. They're not having to worry about these hallways. They just need to make a room that fits these dimensions. Um, so you can put junior modelers on that to kind of cut their teeth. Uh, so modules for CIG is a lot less resource intensive if they can get modules working. And they almost certainly will. They're just not a priority right now. So right now I'm gonna cut over and uh, so let's kind of shift our focus a little bit on uh, CIG's issues, sort of their blockers on modules, and also what game development is in general when it comes to these things. Because I kind of want to make an analogy of Starfield here, which seems non sequitur, but I swear it isn't. So let's go ahead and get that. There are a number of things that we've talked about over the years, uh, big sweeping apocalyptic changes to Don't say that word <laughs> uh, 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 j just just features that should absolutely kill every character uh let's, let's go ahead and ask them about that i was going to get mark with that one uh where is player facing modularity we've been hearing about this thing for quite some time uh and what, what can you tell us if anything about this system uh so it is it is still planned. Uh, though I say this every time that people ask me. Uh, it's still planned. It's not something that we want to get rid of or uh, just not doing it and hoping people forget it exists, which is what I, I see a lot on Spectrum. Um, <laughs> it's The big thing is it's quite a... There's a core tech blocker on it, which is uh, item port system uh, needs to work within object containers, which it does uh, at the moment, like ships have or stations have item ports inside them uh the problem it has at the moment is object containers assume some sort of level of they are static they're not dynamic they can't object containers themselves can't move and they really don't like being um deleted and undeleted at runtime um and the item port system within those would have to dynamically attach and detach so we we use the retaliator as the really good example for this and uh, when we have this in, it will be the first ship that gets the modularity in game. The retaliator bomber modules need the item ports for the torpedoes mm -hmm. to be placed within the object containers, which the object container itself will be in an item attached to the ship. Uh, and we need the game to be able to read those detached and undetached events and link all the uh, power uh, and missile controllers to the items within those object containers. Um, because at the moment, those um, torpedo items are actually part of the exterior ship CGA to make them work. So whilst we could do the modularity right now, you'd never be able to get rid of those torpedoes in the ship. Um, so you would swap out the room and have the like the, the uh, drop seat room, be able to swap it in, could do that right now. 
you just have these four size nine torpedoes shoved in the room at the same time as well. So what we're waiting on is the <clears throat> the vehicle tech team to work on that dynamic detach and retaching of item ports in object containers in items attached to ships. It's just a, a horrible nesting problem. And when we have that, the world's our oyster. We can it's that's the only thing stopping us from rolling it out. And um, so, uh, yeah, that's gonna sorry, I was gonna say that's gonna bring us lots of options to um yeah, rather than every new feature requiring an entire new ship, it's going to allow us to kind of, you know, um, give support the features, but still be able to spend the time making the ships that, that everyone wants us to make and, and not just kind of being kind of bottlenecked by, OK, well, you know, we need to do this particular feature support, so it has to be a new ship. Um, it just opens up loads and loads of new options, which is super cool, because, you know, at, at the end of the day, our ships are awesome. Some of our ships are quite large, and they could definitely benefit from from having some kind of you know more variation to them in their functionality. Yeah. So, I mean, personally, I'm really looking forward to being able to actually go back and do the module containers for the Carrick to actually go a bit further with them. But like, like John's saying at the moment, if if we were to do them, the problem would be you'd still have whatever module was in the place of the cargo holds, yet the cargo hold would be there. And then the item ports inside them would be there and it would just layer on top of each other again and again and again. So you might recognize this and you might be wondering why I'm calling up this particular show or advertisement on a Star Citizen bid. So this is Starfield, which is the newish game from Bethesda. About a year ago, they started advertising this game. Now, one of the things I'm going to talk about is right here. So you see that robot? Let's watch what it can do. So it starts walking out. Now, I want to ask you, how many times during the development of this game do you think the AI, NPC programmers, and modelers were pulled off that robot to do something else? And the answer is probably many, 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 many times that they started work on and they're like, hey guys, we need you to work on this thing over here or we need you to work on this little crab creature here. Uh, could you animators work on that? And so the, the robot was put on the back end for a little while. They needed some character animations here, although that looks like mocap. And then they were like, okay, we need the pincher animation. We need some sound effects. Uh, we need that thing to move around for this one scene the robot can wait. So what's my point here? My point here is that game development is, it's not sequential. In, in normal games, it's not sequential. What they do is they'll pull together something like this and they'll just kind of work on things as they, as they finish them, they'll just kind of start plugging in pieces and they'll drop it in. And at the end of the day, you'll get something that's a semi-finished project. And if you're lucky, it'll come out super polished and good if it comes out bad it'll be fallout 4 it'll be cyberpunk where it's just a shit show uh but anyway if star system were normally developed we would not be getting it until it had reached this point we'd be hearing about it probably in 2024 we'd probably start getting kotaku articles or i don't know if gamer magazine is still out there pc gamer or whatever but you'd start getting articles of Chris Roberts, the maker of Wing Commander, has a new dream child. And you'd start getting pictures and you'd start getting playthroughs like this and uh, little demos and stuff like that. Very tight vertical slices where everything's working and clean and shows all the mechanics. Um, you'd never see the sausage getting made. And that's the kind of thing that you would get with a production game. Like if a production company say Sony or someone like that were backing Star Citizen as opposed to us, this is what you'd get. And it probably wouldn't have nearly the features that we're getting in Star Citizen. So the advantage that we have with Star Citizen being funded by us is that Chris Roberts doesn't have the production company saying, no, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that, released by Christmas of 2025, full stop, I don't care what it looks like in the Christmas of 2025, that's what they're getting. With us funding it, he can kind of be, I'm going to make the game that I want to make, and it's going to take as long as it takes. And that is essentially what Chris Roberts has done here. Um, 
Okay, that guy totally ignored him. We just coming up and shooting him in the back. But anyway, um, so the good side of that is that Chris Roberts can make the game that we all want to make. The downside is, is that with the promise of openness, I don't want to look at him. So let's look at this. This is prayer. Um, the downside is that Chris Roberts, he doesn't have to deal with the production company, but he has to deal with us. And in a normal gaming process, he wouldn't have to worry about that because the only people he'd have to keep happy were the production company. And it wouldn't matter if there wasn't a community out there. By the time the game released, there would be. In this case, he's building the community as he's building the game and he's funding the game through the community. So in order to fund the game through the community, he has to keep us happy. Um, and that's kind of a blessing and a curse because as you can see in the last couple of weeks, this community is kind of hard to keep consistently happy for a long time. It's been a very long project. It's kind of been a very arduous process uh, and not always as transparent as they promise it. Um, and the problem is, is that if the community dries up, the funding dries up, and then the game doesn't get made. So they kind of have to keep us happy. And one of the reasons I say that this isn't necessarily the community's fault. We didn't choose to fund the game this way. Chris Roberts and Cloud Imperium Games did. So they've made this bed, now they got to sleep in it. So with that in mind, we got to kind of go at it from what's our responsibility as a community. And the thing is, is that our responsibility as a community relies a lot on how we're being communicated with. And CIG sometimes drops the ball with that. Those statements by John Crew that you just saw prior to this, they're good. Like CIG needs to talk to us like we're adults is effectively what it comes down to. And they need to say, they just kind of need to get to the point where they kind of hammer home Squadron 42 is coming first, and this is why. We need to do this, this, and this. This is our plan. Once this is out, we can do this. Once this is out, we can do this. And it's kind of like I was saying with Starfield here, there's going to be points where they've got to pull teams off. And they say, no, you got to work on this. This piece has got to be working before we can work on this piece. And with that in mind, let's go ahead and we'll log in. And we'll look at these teams that John Crew mentioned and sort of see what they're doing, just because I kind of want to make a point about that. All right, so here we are in the progress tracker, which if you've followed this channel at all, if probably stumbled on me, you probably stumbled on my shallow drives on the um, sprint watch, which is basically just going over the progress tracker and all the things that have changed. Um, so let's go ahead and we'll look up the vehicle. Feature team, which is these two teams right here are the ones that are going to be working on. Let's go ahead and find where we are now. Um, these are the two teams that are going to be working on modularity and the retaliator. I think they actually took out the vehicle experience team, so it's all the vehicle feature team. So you can see they have 38 deliverables here. So they're working on aerodynamic control surfaces, bug fixing and tech debt, which they're going to be working on forever. Uh, jump points, MFD rework. They just finished the whole C, miscellaneous support. Uh, persistent streaming and server meshing. Again, they said that they needed that before they could do modularity. You can see it's still going to be worked on for a long time. Um, persistent and server, server streaming is another one of those things that uh, they can sort of drop it in in modules, ironically. And as we get pieces, we may get the retaliator or modularity at some point before then. I think they're kind of betting that they're going to be able to swing back and do modularity before they finish building the galaxy. And we'll have it in the retaliator first because the retaliator is both a smaller ship and it's got two modules, so it's possible you could pull out both and really test the stress test the system before you get there. Uh, but let's just kind of keep going. So this is the big one. The Squadron 42 vehicle support, this is what they're actually focusing on and working on. Engineering, that is your team that is going to be doing modularity. And they're booked until June at least. And again, June is just kind of 
mostly how far they're looking right now. Once uh, January rolls around, we'll see what they're saying here. Uh, they should be wrapping with Squadron 42 pretty soon with this guy's stuff, I'd hope. So uh, otherwise, Squadron 42 is never going to get released. But this is the big one. So again, Squadron 42 is the elephant in the room. They're trying to finish Squadron 42. So uh, I just kind of wanted to point that out before we get too far off topic here. Uh, let's go ahead and wrap this thing up. So let's head back to the Retaliator and finish this. All right. So in conclusion, my thought here is that CIG has kind of painted themselves into a corner with some of their communications, which you'll hear me if I'm harping on one aspect of CIG in general. It's going to be that their communication kind of suffers a little bit. Um, I think that they're still kind of living in 2016 and 2017 when they were getting sued by CryEngine when uh, a certain unnamed person, Derek Smart, was really hammering them on social media. They had a lot of people like refund me types who really, really, really wanted to see this, uh, this whole thing fail. Um, and you still kind of get that to a lesser extent, but it's, it's a little more muted now that the game has more stuff to do in it. It has more game loops. It's obvious that they're kind of fulfilling some of their promises from earlier, but CIG is still in this mindset that they're playing things very, very, very close to the best. And I think that gets them in trouble where sort of a few of those throwaway lines that I had in the John Crew bit, um, just saying them once in one show isn't enough. You have to say it over and over and over again. So what happens is that they kind of get in this feedback loop with the community where the community will be saying, and by the community I typically mean content creators, will come out and sort of not have any content because they haven't had new gameplay for a while. So they'll say, well, this is kind of an interesting topic that I was really interested in like a year ago. Let's see how it plays. And they'll bring it out and then other content creators will see it, see their hits and sort of say, well, that got a lot of views, so I'm going to talk about it. And all of a sudden the community is in an uproar about a thing that CIG's had a little blurb about, but they think is pretty much done and over and talked to. Like they explain the reason. And they kind of need to get out ahead of that and sort of be like, hey, you know, I know this is the thing that the community really wants. This is why you don't have it right now. Um, and honestly, the answer again and again and again is Squadron 42, which the elephant in the room, which I'm going to put a little card up there, like and subscribe. We're trying to reach blah, 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 etc. Anyway, um, Squadron 42 is kind of the elephant in the room. They're trying to get it out the door quickly so that they can kind of switch focus back to the PU. But the problem is there's a lot of aspects of the PU that Squadron 42 doesn't need. So those various needs are all being deprioritized. And one of those is modularity. You don't need modularity for Squadron 42. You don't need this ship to be a drop ship and a cargo ship. You don't need salvage gameplay. You might not need medical gameplay to the extent that they're talking about. You don't need exploration gameplay. You don't need science gameplay. You don't need crafting. So where that leaves us as a community, all of us who are playing the game right now are playing for the PU. The people who are going to be playing this game for Squadron 42 haven't really come in yet. So you're going to have like... I was saying in that previous video, you're going to have a lot of a feedback loop where none of us is really waiting for Squadron 42. And I won't say none of us. So there are certainly some people I'm going to play Squadron 42 and I back this project for Squadron 42, but I want to play the PU. So I eventually want to play in the verse. Uh, Squadron 42 is just kind of a vehicle to get there. And I'm kind of a Wing Commander fanboy. So, But CIG has decided, either rightly or wrongly, and you can judge them for this any way you want to, that they need to get Squadron 42 out the door. And I largely agree with this. Other people don't, and you're free to agree or disagree with it. This is just the path that they've taken. That they want to get Squadron 42 out the door 
they figure Squadron 42, if it gets good press, has a good release, then that will fund the project to a certain extent. They won't have to have huge ship sales. They could kind of roll out ship sales once a year, you know, just kind of when they need a little boost to the bottom line. And then they can just roll out Squadron 42-esque games every couple of years once they have that engine in, but primarily shift their focus to the PU. That's what I think is going on. But that's kind of where we're at now, is that until Squadron 42 is out, there are going to be things like modularity, the Banu Merchantman, which isn't needed in Squadron 42, other ships which aren't needed in Squadron 42, like the Pioneer and the Endeavor, that are just going to sit on the back burner. Even the Polaris can't be in Squadron 42, because lore-wise, it was a ship that was made after Squadron 42 happened, after the events in Squadron 42 happened. Remember that that game is a prequel to the verse, is a prequel to the PU. Um, so it just means that content for the PU is going to be delayed. And some of the things that we've really wanted for a long time, that CIG has been talking about for a long time, they're still going to develop them, they're just low on the priority list. Um, which sucks because a lot of aspects about this pretty little bird are kind of languishing because of that. Um, still a good torpedo bomber, though. So that's really all I got to say about this one, gang. So, I mean, hang tight. We got a little ways to go. Uh, or don't. There are other games out there that you can play in the interim, and I'm not saying that to be mean. I mean, I took a break and went and played Satisfactory for a few months, kind of came back in. Some people take a year off. That's fine. It's a game in development. It's going to be waiting here when you get back. Um, I have one friend that drops in about every other patch, and he's always like, oh, wow, this is so cool because there's new stuff to him. Whereas if you've just been blasting through and playing it day after day after day after day, you don't really see the big changes in the progress that's being made. Um, and, I mean, also you kind of get hit with the whole, oh, wait, this gameplay still isn't in yet? Well, that's what I'm waiting for, so I'll come back next time. Uh, yeah, it can be frustrating. But it can also be kind of cool to kind of jump back in and be like, now I remember why I like this game. Uh, and if you're here and you're watching this, I'm assuming if you found my channel, you're probably not hate watching it. And if you sat through this whole thing, then... You probably like this game. You might just be a little frustrated with it. Take a break. Hang out. Find some people to play with. Make your own content. And I'll see you in the verse, gang. So, see me next time. Mm -hmm.